on the 28th of July 2016, vigilance from Brixham came to town as part of the classic boat battle. What's your name? Uh, my name is Dave Andrew. Uh, we're from Brixham. Yeah, and uh, what's the name of the boat? Vigilance of Brixham. Yeah, how old is it? 1926 she was built. Uh, yeah. She was the last all sail trawler built at Upham's Yard in Brixham. So when she was actually built, she was redundant in many ways because all the boats then were being built with uh, inbuilt engines. So yeah. she was the last all, uh, all sail trawler. And how did you get involved with her? Personally, yeah. uh, through a friend yes. uh, and a strong desire to sail on a vessel like this uh, and that's where it all starts really. Yeah. So I've only been with the vessel two and a half years, I mean some people have been here since 1997 when we bought the boat. What sort of condition was it when you found it? Um, it was uh, seaworthy, uh, that's probably as much as you could say. Um, but she'd gone through a, a whole range of uh, different lives from her original being built as a sailing trawler, uh, which ended effectively in the, in the 30s with the depression in, in fishing. Saw war service as a barrage balloon. We're not quite sure whether it was a, as a tender to a barrage balloon or whether she actually was a base for a barrage balloon. And then went through various owners uh, after the war. Uh, I was involved in survey work over the Pharaohs, uh, gentlemen's yacht. Uh, part of the folklore of the vessel is that uh, a guy who had ho owned her uh, died at sea, not on this vessel. Uh, the day of his funeral, uh, his, the boat burned down to the waterline. Uh, the story, wa story was the wife was concerned that two sons didn't follow the, the uh, husband. But whether there's any truth in that, I don't know. It was all part of the folklore. Uh, then uh, was uh, bought uh, and uh, basically rebuilt from scratch, but built by a guy who was very, uh, very clever in actually sort of being able to find materials, find... So, you look at Vigilance today, I mean, she's very close to what a, a bricks and sailing trawler would have been, but obviously, yeah, she's evolved, so the doghouse would not have been the future of a sailing trawler. Uh, if you go below decks, you'll see we have a spiral staircase, which certainly wasn't part of a sailing trawler, but she's evolved over the years. And then um, the people of Brixham, uh, at that time there was no sailing trawler in Brixham, a Brixham sailing trawler. Um, the opportunity to buy the boat from Ken Harris, the person who'd done all the conversion, came along. And uh, we created a company, uh, the preservation company, uh, acquired her and since 97 uh, we've operated as a not-for-profit company and uh, basically by doing visitor sales, short charters and trips across to, the, uh, to France and uh, to other festivals we've generated enough income just to continue to, to maintain the sailing order. Oh absolutely, absolutely. And I mean, today we've had quite an interesting sail from Brixham. Unfortunately we had to motor sail for quite some time. Uh, coming into Sutton Harbour was quite a challenge, as you can see the location we're in. Just in time for TV as well. Well, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so it's great to be here. And as you can see, we're already beginning to enjoy being here. And we're looking forward to being in the, uh, the Grand Parade on Sunday. Uh, we won't be say, uh, s uh, sailing in the racing, but we will be accompanying the racing on Sunday. Uh, before we go back to Brixham on Monday. Yeah. How many members are well, uh, on our list, we have some 34 names of crew, all volunteers, and every, every person involved with the company is a volunteer. Uh, we have shareholders, they receive no dividends. Uh, every person who's involved, uh, from the administrators to crew to maintenance people, skippers, all voluntary, uh, no, no uh, payment at all. How many crew members does it to, uh, take to uh, run Well, I mean, we sail today with six, yes. and that's comfortable. I, the, the thing you'll notice is we've got no real assistance. We, we refuse to use the winch, yeah. so everything is hand-hauled. Uh -huh. uh, so the big, the big challenges are obviously in whether, yeah, lifting a, a pretty massive mainsail, as you can see. Uh, but, uh, 
Yeah, and as you'll also notice, we're we're a crew of a certain age as well. Yeah. So uh, uh, yeah, but it's been good fun. We're all together, so we all know each other really well as well. Oh yeah, I mean you can see the social now. Yeah, and I mean, and one of the great things about the vigilance is we have a Tuesday uh, maintenance morning. But vigilance then is almost like a man shed, you know. So it's yeah. great, lots of people, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah of, of different circumstances and different situation come along, and it's just great camaraderie, you know, yes. and uh, it works very well. Have you got a website? We have, yeah. It's uh, vigilanceofbrixen.co.uk, uh, and uh, as I say, we do uh, day sailings. Because we uh, are a Brixham boat, uh, because we acquired the boat to bring her back to Brixham, then we, we are quite clear that our policy is that we don't sail away from Brixham for more than 20% of our sailing time. So uh, the great part of our business is doing three hour visitor sails around the bay. And then we do charters, uh, half day and day charters or longer. And then we usually have two or three trips uh, every year, one of which will be uh, across the channel. Uh, this year, unfortunately, we had to withdraw from Douane uh, yes. just because of circumstances. But we would normally do one of the major uh, festivals in France. Uh, we're due to go to the, uh, uh, the Weymouth uh, Festival. Uh, which of the festivals in France you go to? Uh, we, we, we have gone to Brest in the past. Yeah. Uh, we tend to find out that Brest is a bit big. Uh, and so Douane and A and Pam Paul tend to be our favourites. But we, we've gone to Binnick and other areas. Yeah. Is it, what's the security like in France? With all the risk of, um, well, I mean, we are not us, but uh, uh, a vessel which belongs to uh, another company in Brixham, Pilgrim, has been over and said that the security was quite quite extreme really. I mean not that it affected the festival but they were aware that of this heightened security. Um, but we, we were concerned that there doesn't seem to be that amount of interest in going cross channel at the moment which could be a variety of reasons. But, uh, uh, so basically we we cancelled, uh, there are a number of reasons why we cancelled but one of them is simply we didn't have drawn the number of passengers we needed to make it a commercial yeah, success really. And that's the, yeah, we gamble all the time. Okay. Yeah, so this is a dog house, obviously, which is a, a later addition. I'm not, it, it certainly was here before we acquired the boat in 97. Yeah. As was the spiral staircase. <laughs> oh, this is the spiral staircase. This is the spiral staircase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, it's a nice size room, isn't it? Quite tardy slight, yeah. So, uh, this is our saloon, obviously untidy, so if you can come back and do some more shots. Yeah. But this would have been the, sh uh, the uh, fish hold. Okay? Yes. I'm more or less unchanged in terms of its dimensions, so went out with you know, quite a lot of ice, came back hopefully with quite a lot of fish. Yeah. Okay? Um, in terms of what was the... You only uh, got small hammocks though, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not the first person to say that. Do you shrink when you come downstairs? <laughs> yeah. uh, we're in the process of building a new galley. Um, yeah. We um, went into Mashford's yard in Plymouth yeah. uh, over the winter uh, to have some new planking and some of the ribs uh, replaced, which meant the existing galley, which was re needed replacing anyway, uh, was all ripped out, so this is in the process of being built. So yeah, uh, this is job uh, in process. So you get sponsorship for this as well? Aren't you? Well, no. I mean, the the dilemma we're in is because at the time it was felt appropriate to be a private company, uh, we don't have charitable status. So yeah. although we act as a not-for-profit company, uh, as far as company law is concerned, then we are you know, a, a a commercial company. We're currently uh, in the process of acquiring CIO status yeah. uh, for Friends of Brixham, which we hope will then uh, allow some charity collection. But I, the, the situation we're in really is that, as a, uh, I believe, is that as, because we're a commercial company, anything which might be regarded as normal expenditure in relation to running a boat, yeah. um, generating an in income, although that the total income goes to the maintenance of the boat, uh -huh. um, would not be eligible for, for grant support or even charitable donations. 
But what we're about is that we bought uh, Visions back to be part of the Brixham community. Yeah. So we see it as an education resource. Uh, we see it as part of the you know, the culture and heritage of, of the uh, the town. Certainly, we want to encourage people to come on board to learn about fishing boats, about sailing, sa traditional sailing boats, about the shipwriting skills that go along with boats like this. And those are elements which we think, you know, because they're not the commercial element of a company, something that the friends of, Brit of Vigilance can actually push along and, and hopefully get some income. Example, uh, we have had the uh, Sea Rangers, Brixham Sea Rangers, uh, out with us on two occasions so they can learn to sail on a traditional boat. Last year we had the children from the local school to do the similar thing. Part of the concern is that to bring children on board of a mixed age, we need to make sure we've got the life jackets to be able to do that. Yeah. So we would see that as an area where, yeah, as part of the education process, it would be a legitimate ask to have some funding towards life jackets for children. Is, it, is the lottery funding available for you? Well, it may be, but not to us as a company, yeah. uh, but it would be to the friends as a charity. Yeah. Um, so that's where we are at the present time. So our whole raison d'etre is to, to have vigilance well maintained, operating within Tor Bay, available as part of the, the tourism offer in Tor Bay, which really means that Really, we've got to generate something like 35,000 a year just to keep her in a reasonable sailing condition. Yeah. If we have major works, um, the Mashford's works was not quite 40,000, but that's just for that works, then yeah, we've got major issues about income generation. Uh, so that's the driver. Uh, obviously, with very few overheads in terms of staff because they're all volunteers. Uh, the more often we can sail rather than motor sail. I mean, it's just considerations like that, you know, less fuel to use. So it's, yeah. it's that operation. If we just move forward, again, we're not seeing this in the best light uh, because it's always work in process. But this would have been the actual accommodation for the guys who sailed this. And as you can see, so I will tidy this up for you when you come on board. But it's a certified accommodation for four seamen. Yeah. Uh, the culture in. Uh, Brixham is that boats like this were sailed by two men and a boy and fished. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, some days we struggle with five or six crew. They actually fished as well. Uh -huh. uh, but if you see old photographs of, of uh, vessels like Vigilance, very often they were moored in the harbour with their sails. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So uh, and they did use steam winches and, and things like this to. Uh, to help them along, but when you think that you know, they were going to put a massive trawl over the back of the boat, sail the boat, yeah. draw in this, this uh, net, put the fish on board, presumably gut and then store the fish, Please. as well as sail the boat as well. You can yeah. see that for three, you know, three people, two men and a boy, or perhaps three men and a boy, they've got a, a lot to do, really. When you've got 30 uh, members, uh, then how do you uh, assign them? Or, or well, do you call them in? We've, what we've got is 34 crew members on the list. Yes. Now, like most organisations, some of those are extremely active, and some of them are extremely inactive, but they're still on our, our list. Yeah. And that crew list also includes people who are interested in the boat from the maintenance point of view. They yeah. want to be involved in restoring a boat and are less concerned about actually sailing here. So it is a mixed range of, of interests really. Oh. So in terms of those 34, we probably have, I guess at the moment, perhaps 15 who can be considered people who are prepared to crew on a reasonably regular basis. Yeah. We've currently got five skippers, which is this bigger number of so skippers. Who picks and choose who's uh, the crew at any, any one time? Um, they choose themselves, effectively. I yeah. mean, as long as we're clear that we've got uh, the re required level of skills amongst the people who volunteered. So, um, primarily, we sail with a skipper. We sail with an exceptionally competent member of crew who is regarded as the mate. Yeah. And we would look to two other members of crew who are sufficiently competent that the four of them could handle the boat reasonably well. So you have to have like a, a sort of set programme so that they can 
Yeah. Pick and choose when they want so, to. So, I mean, where we sit at the moment, I can tell you the date of every sale between the start of our season, which was Easter, yeah. right through to the end of the season, which is the end of October. So, but normally we sail on Tuesday afternoons, Thursday afternoons, Sunday mornings. So, uh -huh. those are our visitor sales. And then in between, we will slot uh, uh, half day charters. So, this so far this year, We've got, I think it's 20 half-day charters. Uh, we've got two long charters, one of which has already taken place, which was to San Marlo and the Channel Islands, uh, which was ten, eight, no, eight days duration. Uh, we've got a short charter in September, which is probably just a, a cruise along the South Devon coast. Uh, and then, as I, I said previously, we've got our programme voyages, as we call our long trips. And this year, uh, it would have been Duan and A, which we've withdrawn from, uh, which has just gone. Uh, the uh, water fest at Weymouth, and then this today. This today is a crew trip. So, yeah. so this is a thank you to the crew, basically. Yeah. So the the company is you know carrying the cost of this for, yeah. for the crew to have the, the weekend away. Is the wine free as well? Uh, no, it's not. So <laughs> we provide the boat, and uh, yeah. we have a kitty for the uh, the breakfast, uh, yeah. and then uh, you know. Well, if we eat on board, uh, there's, that'll be part of the kitty. So, yeah, basically they've had the sale, they've got the opportunity to stay here for the festival and then yeah. the sale back. There's no problem writing the Vulcan in Plymouth. Well, got, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we, we'll, we'll do okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what we've got, uh, uh, so we've had seven, seven crew bring her down today. Uh, one guy has gone back, he's just done the outward bound trip. Um, we've got one of our skippers uh, joining us tomorrow, he couldn't come today so he's just coming down for the duration of the festival, sailing back with us on Monday and then we've got three, three, possibly three, four other people joining us on Monday to sail back, so yeah. uh, you just, just, yeah, just domestic circumstances to where they're here. So this, this previously would have been when she was fishing, this would be really where they'd store the, the fishing gear, the trawl nets and everything, uh, store the sails. Uh, so all these partitions are later additions. Uh, so crew quarters now uh, forward. Uh, this again, which is not being used at the moment. It's this like, is like the, a TARDIS, isn't this it? This is our Laura Ashley suite <laughs> because it's got these turned. Uh, yeah, again, yeah. a feature of the previous owner. Yeah, who sort of used it. Uh -huh. uh, two heads. Um, so we've got berths for sixteen people basically. Okay. Yeah. yeah. As you can see, the, uh, the basic feel of the fishing vessel is still here. You can see what are the later intrusions, but I think they, for, I mean, people come on board and I think they think two things. Wow, this is enormous compared with what we expected. You know, the yeah. reaction you had when you come into the saloon. Yeah. And uh, gosh, this is pretty basic, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it has to be basic anyway. Well, that's right. Keep it yeah. light and... Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and create the room. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, I mean, I think it's pretty comfortable anyway, it looks good. Yeah, and, I mean, and the, the great thing about the vigilance, really, it's the boat, but it's also the people who are involved in it. Because yeah. uh, what's great, I mean, I'm involved in doing a lot of the bookings and things, uh, and the feedback you get from people is they've had a great sail, yeah. but they've had a great time with the crew. They like the crack you know, the, with yeah. the crew, and they're, they're made to feel very welcome. And I think that's a big part of, of you know, what we're... Well, what we are, not what we're promoting, that sounds a bit commercial. It's just, yeah, people come on board, they fall in love with the boat very quickly, uh, and they just enjoy sharing the experience with other people. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so... Well, you've got to be able to work as a team anyway. Oh, absolutely. Because you're only as bad yeah. or as good yeah. as these. Yeah, you know, and I mean, yeah. And uh, what's, what's nice about it is that uh, I think on most boats you learn by your mistakes. Yeah. And... Um, if you make a mistake on this boat, you, the point will be made you made a mistake, but in a, a really fun way. Yeah. And you know that your turn will come to get your own back sooner or later. And that's the whole way it works. Yeah. Really. yeah. Great, great, great crowd of strong people. Strong smell of Hessian in here. Well, the strong smell of lots of things, really, because I mean, yeah, we're, we're, we're constantly uh, maintaining. So uh, we we left this morning with wet paint and, you know, <laughs> so, so the smell of paint. Yeah. Terps, 
um, well, that, that might be diesel. Really good I mean, diesel. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah uh, coming through. And yeah, give a long enough trip bodies as well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, thanks so much for that. Anyway. No, that's great. If it's that useful, that's fine. Thanks to Dave Allen. You can contact Vigilance through www.vigilanceofbrixham.co.uk. Also telephone 07764 845 353. That's 07764 845 353. Thanks to you, Jonathan Price and Plymouth Classics. You can find them on Facebook and through their website. This has been a Chris Summerfield Media production 2016. You can contact me through ccsphoto12 at hotmail.com. You can also PayPal me if you want to sponsor me through christophersummerfield at gmail.com.